What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjuli here with the long-awaited part one of my war series, How to War. And uh, part one, we're just going to talk about teams, because I don't think anything else matters until you kind of have a good grip on what the teams are, what the teams you could be working towards are, and how to use them. So on screen right here, hopefully it's very readable. I have broken everything down in a couple of ways, and I'll get into why and how. But you check real quick. These are roughly the 18 current widely accepted meta teams for war. Sorted by how early in the game you are likely to uh, unlock them, or at least unlock enough of them to make a usable team. Like I said, these are mostly meta-defined teams. And if you've heard my conversations about meta from stream, Meta is always changing, so these teams are likely to change or evolve or adapt in time. One character may be better on a different team. They may release a rework. Anything could happen. Um, some teams have a great deal of viable replacements uh, on either offense or defense. But for the purposes of simplicity, to introduce people and to put people on a good path, uh, I want you to treat these teams as complete when they have at least all of the unhighlighted characters. Obviously the highlighted characters are in yellow. Yeah. Characters highlighted in yellow represent common options among the various levels of play. So just real quick, talking about the teams. Uh, I've broken it down to four categories. The early teams, the teams that players are most likely to unlock uh, quickly. Uh, the mid-game teams, the teams that are more likely to appear after some time has been ex uh, spent in the game after you've uh, farmed up and accomplished certain tasks. The late game teams, the teams that either specific characters are not available early or they're not a very high priority early. And of course, the end game teams, the teams that are either uh, specifically designed around war or the teams that have been released soon as of, as of this video is making, like recently, and they're unfarmable. Uh, these obviously will change as time goes on, but again, just kind of keep a great, like take all these with a grain of salt. Something might happen that makes the Asgardians incredibly easy to farm. Something might happen that makes the uh, Fury Shield uh, easier or harder to come by. Just look at these as of uh, right now, and this is January 2020, to get a real understanding of what these teams are. So you can take... take Quick early event. Now, these are in no order. Just to throw that out there. But the teams that I have right here, are we have the Defenders, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and you'll notice the highlights are Punisher or Ms. Marvel. Either work. Uh, now, this team can be used on offense or defense. That's not what we're getting into right now. We're just going to talk about the specific teams. But there are options outside of this. So your Defenders team is relatively done when you actually have all four of the Defenders. The other characters are Flex. Uh, moving to the Guardians, now, this might not be as early as some of the others, but again, no particular order, just how I place them. Star Wars, Groot, and Rocket are the core of the team. The, uh, the modifications you see to that team, you could have Drax and Gamora, Mantis, Gamora, Drax, and Mantis, or you can have the BKT, which would have Thanos and Minerva in it. There's obviously modifications like the tech team, but the tech team isn't a war team. The tech team is what you use until you have the right placement. That's something a lot of people don't understand. There are teams that can succeed in war. There are teams that you can put together to get a victory or a counter against certain teams, but that's not what makes a team a team. Uh, so what makes a team a team is how good they are and how consistent they are, consistent enough that most people are using them. You'll also notice that I'm not putting together, ooh, look at how cute this team is. Look, I'm using Ultimus, or look, I'm using you know, Ant-Man and Wasp together. You can use them together, that's fine, but that's more of a situational investment than a high-impact investment, and I don't want to give people uh, more information. This is obviously so much information, I don't want them to start worrying about, well, maybe I can invest in this weird character to accomplish one single task. I want you to have a good understanding of what the character's uh, that work together or with the characters that will most likely benefit you uh, 
are to work on. Hand, you'll notice they're all yellow because uh, basically any five hand characters function as a hand team. They don't need Nobu, they don't need Electra. The hand is, is just one of those teams where it's gonna be completed. It's technically a team, even though it's not particularly good at anything. And on, on defense specifically, it requires a reasonable answer. So I count them as an early game team. They're very easy to get early game. And at least they have more synergy than five random characters. Uh, the Kree, I call them an early team, not specifically because they're easy to access early, but because it's more likely that you will have a completed Kree team than a completed shield team. So they are a team that you would work on prior to unlocking shield anyway, because of Nick Fury. So it's more likely that you'd have them completed earlier. And then of course the War Avengers, you'll notice that Captain America, Hulk, Quake, and Hawkeye, relatively easy to access characters. You will probably unlock them accidentally as you play. The other two flex characters are Black Widow, who who knows when you're gonna unlock her, and Ant-Man, who's also a relatively uh, easy unlock. There are other characters, obviously Vision, Vision is Im almost impossible to farm in the early game. You have to get lucky or buy him, so I'm not including him in this conversation. Um, before I go on to mid, late, and end, I just want to address dead characters right here. Dead characters doesn't mean useless. Uh, they're just characters that don't have a specific uh, demand or a specific slot for them. The characters in red, I can zoom in a little bit, boop, will show you just, you expect, what you expect, Hydra characters, the Ravager characters, Merc Sniper and Merc Soldier, Nebula, Winter Soldier, Night Nurse, Bullseye, Ultimus, and Wasp. As of the time of this game, these characters, one, not very much worth your investment, two, don't have a specific team designed around them, uh, and three, if you don't have them, your success in war shouldn't uh, be broken. Your, your level of success, no matter where you are, doesn't require much investment in these characters. There's advantages to them, Ravager Boomer can solo a node that's just shield operatives or shield characters. Uh, Ultimus can be used to counter certain things, but ultimately they are dead in that no one really respects them enough to build a team around them. Where the yellow characters, Aim, Infector, Cree Oracle, Hand Blade Master, Korath, Shield Operative, Shield Trooper, uh, these are characters that aren't maybe not in the optimal version of a team, but you can put them with the team. Uh, obviously, Shield Operative and Shield Trooper could be on the Shield team in lieu of Coulson, etc. Gamora can obviously be on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Crossbones, Merc Lieutenant, and Merc Riot Guard, totally viable as characters you put with an Ultron in the endgame or just as a villains team because most people don't have their defenders on offense. Like They have uses, but they're not specifically necessary for any particular part of the game. They tend to be flex characters for teams. So... Moving on to the mid-game teams. Uh, mid-game, again, no order in particular. Uh, Shield, Brotherhood, Sinister Six, Wakanda, and the Brawlers. Now, the Shield team is Nick Fury, Medic, Shield Security, Assault, and then what you have. Obviously, there's reason Coulson has a couple of dots next to his name right over here is Coulson is a defense character that makes shield a defense team where any other shield character would make this team a little bit better on offense so shield technically has two forms or two modes or two evolutions uh it's the offensive shield team and then the defense powerhouse shield team based on colson you're likely to get a shield team early you're not likely to get a colson shield team early so keep that in mind brotherhood uh, it's a little bit more likely that you'd have Brotherhood and Shield around the same time in the mid game. You've picked one to work on, and the core of the Brotherhood team is, of course, Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro. You'll notice there's quite a bit of characters on this team. Um, you can use Venom, Carnage, Kingpin, Crossbones, or the actual two other Brotherhood characters, Mystique and Sabretooth. Doesn't really matter. The Brotherhood is built on the the base of Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro. However else you put that team together is based on your current roster and what you uh, plan on doing them. For example, you might not use Mystique and Sabretooth if you've already unlocked Sinister. It's very unlikely that you'll have Sinister before you have the entire Brotherhood team, at least as of right now. So we'll treat the Brotherhood as its core team and give a couple of different options. Sinister 6, 
is the Sinister Six. You have to unlock them, or at least a relatively good chunk of them, in order to unlock characters like IW and Shuri. So it's more likely that you'll have them completed before you move on to the next team. And they are adequate. They are a good team on both sides of the war. It's more likely at this point in the mid-game that you're working on Sinister Six to finish out your legendaries. And then, again, no order. The Wakandans and the Brawlers. Wakandans are relatively easy to access. Black Panther is one of the earlier farms of them. Okoye is very early. M'Baku is in a store and Killmonger is in a store. Shuri being the only part of that team that's relatively hard to come by. They are not a phenomenal team, but they are still a team. And while you may replace individual parts, you may end up using Black Panther on the next team, or you may end up you know, not having M'Baku and using Merc Riot Guard, totally acceptable. Not having Shuri using Hand Sentry or Hand Sorceress somebody. That's more or less the, the completed version of the team. And it's likely that that be a team you accrue closer in the mid game than towards the very end game. And then, of course, the Brawlers. Now, I've defined the Brawlers very simply. Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, and America Chavez. You'll notice Miles and Spider-Man are yellow. Uh, the Brawlers team is functionally Ms. Marvel and four other Brawlers. But and at this point, it's very likely you've come across enough to get a Captain Marvel or at least enough characters like America Chavez that you could put that team together. And functionally, the Brawlers team is those three characters, Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, and America Chavez. By all means, all brawlers count as members of the brawler team. It's basically just Ms. Marvel and who you have. So if you want to use uh, Miles and Spider-Man and Deadpool, if you have a Heimdall thing and you don't have the full team, throw them together. They'll be adequate on either side of the war. They are a little bit better on defense, but we're not getting too detailed into that now. The uh, late game teams, and this is for, to, put, to paint a picture Late game teams are, you know, you're at level 70 or 75, like you've reached the level cap, you've started farming, you've unlocked a good chunk of the legendaries, you have most of the game nodes on farm. Um, a lot of this is based on when the characters are accessible. Now, obviously, Iron Man is very easily accessible in the early game now. Uh, Falcon, relatively easy to farm. Rescue, it's only from orbs, but... You know, you might at least unlock her early from unfortunate Blitz Orbs as a newer player. And War Machine is available in a store. So that's the core of the Power Armor team. You'll notice that Vision, particularly Hard Farm, and uh, Captain America can easily replace him on this team. Power Armor, not necessarily a team you really need to be working on early. They are very good at war. But it's very unlikely you're going to get too much value out of them outside of war. So I'd mark them as a late team because of that because they're really only good at war and they're they're probably lower impact than some of the other character farms you can have uh, additionally aim aim is a little bit later for two reasons the first is scientist supreme is i believe a cosmic farm and graviton at time of this video is unfarmable the core of the aim team is graviton scientist supreme and aim security with a bunch of other slots whether that be aim assault Aim Monstrosity, Aim Infector, Aim Researcher, that depends on you. I, my personal belief is that Assault and Monstrosity are the two best characters to use as Aim on either defense or offense, but, you know, I've heard Infector beats Asgardians, I've heard Researcher is great for defense. Aim is the core of those three characters, and then any other two Aim characters you want to use. Uh, I've also included Ultron uh, in the endgame. Uh, the main reason why is because at this point in the game, the only thing, in, you know, when you're close to the level cap and you've unlocked a bunch of the legendaries, the thing you're most likely to be working towards is unlocking Ultron. And as you'll notice, the Ultron team is incredibly modular. Ultron on his own requires very specific responses uh, on defense and on, on offense. He can be basically with anybody. So Hand Sentry and Ultron tend to be the most common grouping you found. Uh, I've also seen a lot of Drax, Mantis, and then Doctor Strange, Cable, uh, Crossbones. I've seen a Minerva. I've seen a bunch of different teams, but the core of the Ultron team is basically, did you unlock Ultron? Yes. Well, use Hand Sentry with him. It'll at least give him a little bit of protection and go on from there. And then we start moving towards the teams that are either currently unfarmable 
or uh, difficult to unlock. So the last late game team is the Fantastic Four. As of right now, 2020 January, the only character that you can reliably unlock, I believe, is Invisible Woman and Human Torch. Mr. Fantastic Thing and Namor are not accessible in any uh, farmable capacity. You can find them in orbs. But Invisible Woman, you can definitely work on the Sinister Six to unlock. And Human Torch, I believe, is the first character added to a farm node. Uh, it's not a high priority team, as the Fantastic Four themselves are not particularly great at anything. Individual characters are good. Invisible Woman is good. The Thing is good. Mr. Fantastic can be good. But Namor is great at war, but none of them take priority over things that would help you in, you know, Dark Dimension or raids or arena so it's very unlikely to have a fantastic four team early um and then that, that's where you end to the end game now the end game is you've unlocked all of the legendaries you might have even seven starred some of them you know you've unlocked ultron uh, and now where do we have to go so taking a quick look the x-men again no order the x-men basically it's phoenix colossus and psylocke featuring two other characters Storm and Wolverine are obviously the only X-Men right now. That might change. You might also just not want to use Wolverine because he's terrible. You may not want to use Storm because you don't want to invest in her. Anything can work. Uh, but the, the core of it is after you've unlocked Phoenix. Now, the issue is Colossus is currently dramatically unfarmable. You can either buy him or get lucky and Mega Orbs for him. So that's why I labeled this as an endgame team. If Colossus becomes farmable this team moves a little bit closer to the end game because its priority goes higher because it's more likely that this team will uh, help you earlier. But as of right now, it's a true end game team. Doesn't help that the unlock of Phoenix is the hardest unlock in the game at six random characters for what it's worth uh, that aren't particularly great outside of the team. But ultimately, that's where they land. Supernatural. Now, you're going to easily get an access to a Mordo and a Scarlet Witch. Doctor Strange, not easy, but definitely viable early. Uh, Ghost Rider, currently unfarmable. Elsa Bloodstone, currently unfarmable. So this team is marked as an endgame team because they're unfarmable. Now, obviously, that will change, but as of right now, you can't reliably build this team. You can definitely have Mordo, Scarlet Witch, and Doctor Strange, but without Ghost Rider and Elsa you're looking to kind of value out uh, the Supernatural team with like Carnage and Venom or uh, Loki or somebody that that works with their constant debuffs, maybe with a little bit of sustain or, or something along those lines. Truly an endgame because two of the five characters are not farmable. Uh, and then as Guardians. As Guardians are currently unfarmable. You can get Thor and Loki, which are great characters, Thor loses a lot until he's on his full team. Hela, unfarmable. Sif, unfarmable. Heimdall, unfarmable. They are a phenomenal team on both sides of the war. They are a phenomenal team in raids. They are a phenomenal team in a lot of places. Uh, but it's very unlikely that most players would have access to them early. So for now, they are an endgame team. And, of course, a uh, defense prioritized team. We also have the Marauders. Um, these are I've actually labeled these as the last endgame team because it's significantly easier to imagine you using your Brotherhood team completely before worrying about characters like Mr. Sinister and Strife. You'll also notice that there are quite a few options for the fifth. There is no fifth at the time of this, so Ant-Man, absolutely adequate. Cable, absolutely adequate. Merc Riot Guard, great. Uh, you can also use characters like Namor or Hand Sentry. There's, there's a bunch of options for the Marauders, but the Marauders is the core four, we don't know when Strife and Sinister will be accessible, and until they are, Mystique and Sabretooth pretty much serve a better purpose on the Brotherhood team. I've also included the Inhumans, because at the time of this video, they're not out yet. Uh, I've included them as the last endgame team, because like I said, they're not farmable and they're probably not going to be. But it's Black Bolt, Yo-Yo, Crystal, Karnak, and Quake. Are there better versions of this team? I can't tell you. I don't know. I have not seen all of the kits. We don't haven't seen a lot of the plays we can imagine what they would look like based on what we've seen but as of right now we can treat the inhumans as a team as they do have a completed version of a team and no matter what they're an end game team so 
up to the Inhuman point, there was about 18 teams. The Inhumans add the 19th team to war. And this should give you, you know, zoom out real quick. This should give you a pretty good understanding of where the characters are best used. As a note, now, just to finish this off, teams are considered war ready, at least from my conversation. Now, this is not my information. I went through conversations with a couple of people in my alliance, uh, specifically Remin X uh, and Big Tamer and Sylphanus. I've talked to people in other alliances. I uh, did not ask permission to use their names, so I'm not going to. But if they give me permission, I'll give them credits in the description uh, to get an idea of not only what alliances at any level at the top end or the middle end are experiencing, but just how people are experiencing war at every level. My roommate just picked up the game starting to be in war and uh, I started applying this information to him and he is finding personal success in war. You can't really control what 23 other people do, but as long as you have an understanding of what the teams are, as long as you're prepared on what you're uh, going to do, you should be okay. And I think that when I define these teams this way, you now not only know what you could be working on, but what you expect to see from your opponents. And that's information that allows you to prepare. Because if you expect in an early stages of war to see Guardians and Defenders and Hand and Kree, then you can start working with your very limited roster to know, well, this is how I'm going to beat those characters. Or this is how I'm going to use these t characters uh, throughout the course of the war. Uh, I consider a war team ready at 150k. That doesn't mean they can't be used earlier. Some teams are clearly better earlier, like the defenders are pretty okay at about 80k or less. Um, but for the purpose of succeeding and having a succession plan and understanding where you're going to want to go, this entire series is based on a soft cap of a team in war ready at 150k power. Some teams don't truly don't matter like the wakandans until much later that's true but they'll still be a viable team like they'll still function at about 150k now do the math 150k is about 30k per character and it's it's it makes sense for you to look at them in groups of well this team is 150k on to the next one so any team under 150k Treat it as if it's an incomplete team or it's unreliable. And any team well over 150K, uh, you should rely on very heavily, either on offense or defense for production. That's the core of the teams. Now, like I said, this video is most likely to be updated as time goes on, but I, I just wanted to put everything out there into perspective. And for those who don't know, um, my alliance, Project Rehabilitation, is a perennial top 50 alliance now we don't we don't clear every single season in top you know top 25 we or or top 50 or top 75 but uh as since the beginning of war and people will remember us when we were i am Groot, ai grooting edge twitch.tv slash we, we we're a core group of people who enjoy the concept of war even though the timing of war is a little off so we've been succeeding in war for a long time uh, my advice comes from a guy named Reminex, which if you don't know, uh, video description below. Uh, Reminex was a former player in Cabal who is tired of spending money, so he decided to uh, schlep it down with us. So we put him in a room and told him to take a nap because he is a boomer. And that's how we treat boomers. We let them nap in, in a room. But we have a core understanding. We've always been a very top-tier alliance where we have interesting strategies that have... Uh, ended up making us not get burned out in war often, but still getting between 120 and 200 tier four abilities every season, making sure. And just to show you where we are right now at the time of this video, we are ranked 51 as far as the league info, which shows more over time success than this season. We came in top 20 this season. We were 19th this season. We were 75th this season. We were 103rd, you know, those, those numbers change because we might have replaced somebody. Someone might have been sick. Some We might have been paired very poorly. But uh, over time, we are consistently in the top 50 or so based on what's happening. So we have a really good understanding of war. Uh, and I've applied this 
down to other alliances. I've given other alliances very similar setups. Uh, in the next video of the series, we're going to talk specifically, and I can give you a little bit of a sneak preview on what the next video is going to talk about. It's going to be uh, the concept of the Sweet 16. Now, you can't make out much here because it's clearly not finished yet, but it's it's what to do with your teams once they reach 150. Once you know what teams you are, you, teams you're working towards, you should probably start figuring out, well, what do I do with them? What's the best case scenario for these teams? And we'll get into that in the next video. But for right now, uh, just weaving this up here, these are the teams as they exist, completed. Feel free to move things around and nothing is useless in war. Nothing has no value in war, but these are the completed versions of teams that you either should have, should work towards, or should expect to see uh, from the opponents. The next video we talked about already is going to be about what these teams mean to you and how to use them. You know, once a team reaches 150K, what do I do with it? And then we'll go after that into more of a philosophy kind of conversation of, well, what do I do once I have all of the war teams? Do I go aggressive offense or aggressive defense? How do we do? But for now, this should be good enough. If you have any questions, ask them here, drop by my stream. Uh, I've been talking about this on stream for a long time. I'm finally getting around to making the video. Hopefully this gives information um, that will help you. Uh, the one thing I ask is if you happen to find a team that does something, post it, but that doesn't necessarily change the fact that these are the meta teams right now, give or take. Um, the, the core of the game hasn't changed, so this is what you expect to see. And I think that's more important than finding a niche example because you need to know what the teams are and what to expect before you can start worrying about, well, I use Miles and Green Goblin, Ant-Man and Wasp to beat, you know, Sinister Six on defense. Well, if no one's seeing Sinister Six on defense, that is not helpful information, that kind of thing. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Stop by my stream if you have any questions or comment below. Uh, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.